those that are concerned with protecting free speech and ensuring that um, speech is not too heavily restricted uh, may want to play a role in that in that process so that their voices can be heard and that the legislation that ultimately governs uh, hate speech in South Africa uh, is constitutional and is just. South Africa's Constitutional Court has handed down judgments in a case involving the late Mr. John Kolani. Mr. Kolani was a journalist who, in 2008, wrote an article that was critical of gay marriage. This matter found its way into the Constitutional Court, and I'm joined today by advocate Mark Oppenheimer, who is representing Mr. Kolani. Mark Oppenheimer, welcome back to the CRA channel. Always good to have you here. Could you tell our viewers what was the significance of this case and what was your involvement in it? Yes, so I acted for Mr. Kulani in the Supreme Court of Appeal and in the Constitutional Court. Um, it's a matter that had gone on for quite some time. His article was written in 2008. Uh, an Equality Court complaint was laid against him in the High Court, uh, in which he was found liable for hate speech. Uh, he challenged the constitutionality of the Equality Act um, and was unsuccessful in the High Court, but was successful in the Supreme Court of Appeal and successful in the Constitutional Court. So to give you an idea of what was at stake, um, really there's been a lot of ambiguity um, for many years as to what the requirements are for hate speech in South African law. Um, there were cases saying that hurtful speech um, was sufficient for there to be hate speech. Um, there was a question as to whether you required the advocacy of hatred um, or an incitement to harm or speech that was itself harmful. A lot of ambiguity around these terms, a lot of ambiguity as to the intention of the speaker as well. And so this judgment from the Constitutional Court provides much needed clarity on this quite difficult topic. Enjoying this analysis? Click here to sign up for our 30 day free trial for more content from the CIA. Mark, could you give us more details on the judgment itself and also the next steps from here? Yes, yeah, so the court has declared uh, Section 10 of that Act unconstitutional and referred it back to Parliament. Um, so it must be redrafted within two years. In the interim, the court has created um, a test so that people can still be held liable for hate speech. Um, the main change was to say that the term hurtful um, will be removed from legislation. So hurtful speech, we could imagine as that which causes one emotional distress. So it could make you angry or sad. Um, the, the court held the view that, that to allow speech like that to be sanctioned would be a very big intrusion on the right to free speech. So the ultimate test is whether the words that are uttered by a speaker um, can objectively be understood by a reasonable speaker or reasonable listener um, to be understood as to be the advocacy of hatred and um, that the words are either in and of themselves harmful or that they are an incitement to harm. So an incitement to harm means that there must be a call to action. Um, it must be on a listed ground. So the constitution talks about um, four particular grounds being race, gender, ethnicity, and religion. Um, the Equality Act includes a much greater bevy of grounds, including sexual orientation, um, belief, uh, and a number of others. The constitutional court has said that each of those grounds must be weighed um, by Parliament to determine whether there is enough evidence um, to, to include them, because they recognize that every inclusion of a ground beyond the four in the Constitution is a limitation of the free speech right, but could possibly be justified. Now, uh, harmful speech is not merely speech that causes emotional distress. It must be of a severe, very severe nature, um, the kind of thing that could cause a deep-seated psychological injury. So you can imagine um, that the volume of the abuse um, um, or the, the very severe nature of it could cause one to require uh, psychotherapy, that it causes something like a post-traumatic stress disorder. But it's not the same as saying that you've had an emotional fluctuation, that you temporarily were offended um, or upset. Okay, Mark, so that's a significant judgment. Could you tell our viewers what is the next step in terms of the parliamentary process and reviewing the Papuda legislation. Will there be scope for public comment on that? Yes, yeah, so Parliament is required to go and amend that section uh, of the Equality Act, and that would trigger an obligation to allow the public to participate in that process. Um, the Constitutional Court has really set guardrails. 
So we know the kinds of things that cannot be in that amendment. So we know that hurtful speech um, cannot amount to hate speech. Um, but there might be quite a lot of room um, in terms of what that, that final act could look like. And so those that are concerned with protecting free speech and ensuring that um, speech is not too heavily restricted uh, may want to play a role in that, in that process so that their voices can be heard and that the legislation that ultimately governs uh, hate speech in South Africa uh, is constitutional and is just. Mark Oppenheimer, thank you for joining us on the CRA channel. I'm hopeful that we will see greater protections for freedom of expression arising from this judgment. Before we go, please do remember that we also have a presence on Twitter. Our handle is at center underscore risk. If you're active on that platform, please do give us a follow there. We have short one minute clips of our videos as well as other insights and analysis. My name is David Ansara. This is the CRA. Until next time, take care.